morning, Yvonne. Oh, it's so good to see you here. Oh, and she's already sharing. Thank you so much. Yes, I have a good giveaway today. Well, actually, it'll be on Thursday, but I'm going to split a pack of the Real Red Rhinestones. Welcome, everyone. Oh, good. We have a few people on already. You probably were kind of waiting for me. I think I'm a couple minutes late. Sorry about that. There, my coffee is done. Let me adjust this a little bit. <clears throat> Hello, Karen from Delaware. Good morning, Norma. Who else do we have on here? Good morning, Philomena. Hello, Jean. Good morning from freezing North Dakota. Oh, I think you're sending that cold weather our way. Yikes. Thank you for sharing, Philomena. I really appreciate it. Oh, hello, Cheryl. Cheryl is new, joining my Facebook Live for the first time. Thank you. Oh, yes. We have quite a few on now. Thank you. Oh, Jean, you're so... You do this all the time. You're so sweet. She shared three times already. Thank you. Yes, this is the giveaway on Thursday when I do the drawing. We'll give away some red rhinestone basic jewels because we're using them in the card today. Cheryl is from Tennessee. That's one of my, um, what would you call it, bucket list states. I don't, I think I was in Tennessee once. I think we just drove through a little strip of it on our way to visit my grandma way back when I was a little kid. So I remember counting it as a state I'd been in, but was probably in it less than an hour. <laughs> so that is something I want to do someday. It's on my bucket list to go visit Tennessee. I actually think my husband has a friend that lives there, and so we'll probably plan a golf trip around it. All right, so you guys are anxious to see what we're doing today and it is this card right here it's super cute super sweet super simple and we're going to use the stamparatus and i have some great um well i don't know if they're really tips but just some thoughts about the stamparatus that you might be interested in i'm sure you guys a lot of you already know a lot of things about the stamparatus and i'm sure some of you are way more experienced than i am but i've been using it more and more in my stamping um world and I really like it. it. It just makes making multiple cards so fast. Oh goodness, Cheryl is actually from Dollywood. Woo! Fun. Good morning, good morning, hello. Oh, and the meerkats. Yes, everybody's excited about the meerkats. They are super, super cute. In fact, it was one of the very first um, celebration stamp sets I had to order because Actually, Stampin' Up, when we did our big event that we do to introduce new catalogs, I was down in Atlanta with my very, very good friend, and Monica and I posed in front of the meerkat sign. They had some signs set up for us to take pictures by, so we thought they were pretty cute. Okay, so let me start. We have, okay, so I only did one Facebook Live last week. I like to do two per week, but I was just so busy. We had our demonstrator meeting, and then I was really busy with product shares, and then we were out of town over the weekend, so it was just kind of crazy. So I did get some cards in the mail, and then I got a couple of cards from demonstrators attending my demonstrator meeting. The first one I want to share with you uses the Music from the Heart stamp set, which is in the... Um, January through June 2020 mini catalog. You know, if you guys don't have the mini catalog and you're a fairly um, new person watching me and you're interested in Stampin' Up, you know, just message me. If you are on my Facebook Live, you can find my Stamping to Share Facebook page and there's a place where you can message me and I think that is so easy. You can just give me your address and I can drop one in the mail for you. I'm so happy to do that. But this particular card is from my good friend Sue McNeil. She's not actually a downline member, but I almost feel like she is because she is a regular part of um, different things that we do. She often sits by us when we go to Stampin' Up! events. Uh, we've just kind of, I don't know, we just kind of love Sue. I've known her for many years. 
And one of the things that she does in her cards when she sends them to fellow demonstrators, and I think even to her customers when she sends cards to her customers, she puts a cute little note in it that says, I didn't sign this card before I sent it off to you, but it holds my warmest thoughts, invisible but true. And if you find a time where you need to brighten someone's day, take this card and sign it and send it on its way. Oh my gosh, is that just the cutest little poem? So she puts that little slip of paper into her cards that she sends off. And I, you know, I've been saying for years that I want to do something like that. I'm kind of thinking this is the year. I, you know how it is, you set these New Year's resolutions. Well, I didn't set too many this year, but I think it's, I think this is one I need to set. It's so cute. All right, well, we have Elaine joining us now, Judy joining us. Thank you, you guys. It's great to have you here. If I haven't introduced myself, I probably should do that. I'm Kate Kaltoff, and I am a demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I have been since 2007. I love doing these Facebook Lives because it allows me to interact with you, and I appreciate the sharing that you do. It truly helps me find new customers. And... Um, even beyond that, it helps introduce new people to Stampin', and it's such a fun hobby. So, thank you so much. All right, so let me show you Sue's card, because it is very beautiful. So this is the top of it, and it is a, it's like what they call an easel fold card. So you'll be able to fold the front part of it and it will stand up and it creates a piano. So you can see there's a doily on the piano and there's some music notes. And then the magic happens when you fold this up and you have a little stand for your music and then you set the fold behind the music stand and there is your cute little easel card. And she's got the piano keys on here and it says just a note and it's absolutely adorable. So I just want to thank Sue McNeil, extra special thank you, Sue, for this beautiful card that you shared with me at our demo meeting this past month. All right, so I'll set that aside. That will go on display in my office. And the next card that I'm going to share with you is from my, I have two assistants that help me in my office. And one of them uh, lives just a few doors down from me. Her name is Lily Ernstern. She has been a customer since the very very first Stampin' Up! event that I ever did with customers. And so um, she has actually been my customer since 2007. However, she became a demonstrator several years back and because she just she just loves everything Stampin' Up! just like many of you. And so she joined my, my Creative Crafters Stamping to Share group and I had given her a little Christmas present. And so she sent me a thank you card. And you guys, don't ever underestimate the value of a thank you card. It is so important that if you get a gift or a little um, something something, to acknowledge it, either verbally or with a card or at least with an email. And so this was the cute little card she sent to me. And it's just ador adorable. So thank you so much, Lily, for that. I really, really appreciate it. And the next card I want to share, I have to find a place to put these, all right, is a card from another Downline member. This gal drives quite a ways to come to our local demonstrator meetings. I mean, so many people would just have the excuse, excuse of just, oh, I'll just watch it online. Because, of course, I do have demonstrator meetings that are broadcast online at the same time that we do them. But no, no, not Shelly. She drives that those extra miles to actually come to the demonstrator meeting in person. And uh, this is the card she recently gave me. And I just want to show it to you because it uses that new honeybee stamp set and framelits that are that are in the catalog um in the january through june catalog i don't know the name of it because i don't personally have it yet but this card makes me want it so bad and i think the same thing's gonna happen to you when you see it so here it is oh my goodness isn't it just so cute i love it so i'm gonna hold it up really close so you can get a good look at it just so adorable so that card has a really cute honeybee on it. And then the framelits that go with it, or the thinlets or the dyes, whatever you want to call them, they have a cute little honeycomb. And isn't that just an adorable accent? I don't know. I'm going to have to message her because I just think this is such a cute card. I was thinking um, I may want to actually share this myself. 
All right, so I will move that on to another pile here and let me grab the next card that I received. Now this is my birthday month, so I've been getting some birthday cards in the mail. And our um, Stamp Creative Crafter Stamping to Share demo group has an amazing birthday card uh, rack group where they send cards to people who wanna be in it, in our group. You don't have to be, but many people choose to be. And one of my downline members, Don Michaels, made this beautiful card for me, so I wanted to share it with you. And it uses that Tropical Oasis stamp set, which I do have and I absolutely love. <laughs> so it's just so pretty. Um, one of the things you'll notice about this card is there's a strip of the, um, this new braided trim, which is so pretty. And actually, Dawn said she got this card in a swap. So let me see if she shared who she received it from. She received it from Jackie Lawrence, who is from Elmhurst, Illinois. And she thought it was so pretty, she wanted to pass it on to me. So thank you so much, Jackie, for creating this card. And thank you so much, Dawn, for sharing it with me. I really, oh, I so appreciate it. And next, let's look at the, another card that I got. Another really cute birthday card. This one is from one of my downline members who lives in Florida. Her name is Carol Sullivan. And I know you've seen her cards on here before. She is very, very creative and crafty, which is why we have the uh, Creative Crafters Downline Group. And it looks like this. And it uses the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set. And it's all layered up and so pretty. I figured you guys would just love to see it. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And look at how beautifully it's colored. And then she uses those pink uh, rhinestones to accent it. It's just so much fun. Thanks for all the hearts, you guys. I love it. It really, really uh, brightens not only my day, but the days of the people who, are, uh, who created these cards for me and are also probably listening in. So let me move this along. And then I have an, a card from one of you. So I was completely surprised when I opened up my mailbox and Linda Thomas, who often watches these Facebook Lives, sent me a card. She also used the Tropical Oasis stamp set and I'm gonna show you that right now. Isn't this pretty? Oh my goodness. So thank you so much, Linda Thomas. And she even, she even gave me a matching envelope, which is so cool. So here it is again, if you wanna see it again. So I think she's actually using some, some thinlets or some, some dies that come from a different bundle, but I can't remember the name of the bundle right now. But if you look through that January through June catalog, you'll be able to figure out where it's from. But I absolutely love it. So Susan, you or Linda, you are amazingly talented and I am so grateful that you are in my my warm group of friends who support me on these Facebook lives. Truly appreciated. Okay, so what do I want to show you next? How about paper pumpkin projects? I know a lot of my customers and a lot of you as well uh, order paper pumpkin once a month. So I have the um, January kit. Is it the January kit? No, it's the December kit that is completed and ready to be showed off along with a couple of alternatives. So let me go ahead, flip the camera, and I'll show you the um, December paper pumpkin. All right, so this is always fun to do a little reveal of paper pumpkin. So these cards were all, well, first of all, the most amazing thing about this paper pumpkin kit was the huge stamp set that we got as part of our kit. So it's really quite remarkable. A lot of different sentiments on here. So these cards could be used for anything. So here are some of the cards that, um, so they always give you an instruction sheet. So it looks like this with step-by-step, -step well, step pretty much step-by-step -step instructions of how to do it, but mainly it's the pictures that are so cool because you can look at them and figure out how to do it. And then of course it always comes with a little ink. Uh, and this one was terracotta tile. So these are three of the cards pretty much done like uh, Paper Pumpkin recommended. So there, there you go, that was one of them. 
And then the other one, there was two others that you could do. So there was some congratulations cards, and this is the recommended style. So if you don't want to branch out and do anything differently, you can just follow the style right on the paper pumpkin kit. And then the next card was this one. So this is a so that one was a congratulations card. This is a get well card. Unfortunately, this time of year we need a fairly good sized stash of get well cards. And so these will maybe not actually make someone feel better physically, but for sure they will lighten their their uh, emotional state when they get a card like this in the mail. So bright and cheerful. And I love the gold foil that's in this kit. Here's an alternative card. So it just uses, um, it just uses some products that came in the kit. And then you can just recreate some ideas like this. And then here is another alternative idea. Again, using products that are in the kit and then adding some little extras. So this is kind of a really stepped up paper pumpkin card. And I think it's really pretty. It's a square one, so it would take extra postage to mail. But it's beautiful. And so in addition to the terracotta here, I added some terracotta ribbon along the side. It's just beautiful. All right, so those are fun paper pumpkins. And if you don't already subscribe to Paper Pumpkin and you're interested in doing so, you know what, just message me and we'll get you set up. We'll get that all figured out so you can start getting a kit a month. And um, you can always suspend, suspend your kit if you're going out of town or you're not gonna be around and you just don't want it have it mailed to you. Or maybe you hear it's gonna be a 3D and you don't want the 3Ds. You can definitely sus suspend very easily and I would teach you how to do that. So not to worry, it's lots of fun. Okay, so here is the card and the stamp set. This is a Celebration 2020 stamp set called The Gang's All Mirror. And it's super cute. It's got a whole gang of people in the back, or little meerkats in the background. And this card obviously takes into account that this is a from all of us card. So sometimes you need those birthday cards where you're going to send it from a family. And so this is perfect for that. So this says from all of us right at the top. And then you can see everybody standing in the background and you've got your little birthday cat right here. And then when you open it up, it says happy birthday to a stand-up friend. Super cute. And I will show you how to recreate this with our uh, Stamparatus. So let me grab the Stamparatus first and foremost. And one thing that Stampin' Up! does with the Stamparatus is they offer you a lot of extra supplies with it um, that you can purchase separately, which is really smart. So we have, um, this is really nice. I mean, you can cut your scrap paper down to size, but isn't it nice to have a pad of paper, scrap paper, that you can use with your Stamparatus, perfectly sized to fit into your Stamparatus. And so my Stamparatus, has it fitting here perfectly. So you put the corner piece here and then the rounded edge goes over here to the right. So I'm using this because it's going to stamp outside of the area. And what I have here is this is the base of the Stamparatus, which has a very easily wipeable surface, but I still would prefer to use scrap paper over the top. And then this is some additional, this is an additional thing that you can purchase for your Stamparatus to lift it a little bit higher so it makes it easier for your images to stamp. And it also has all of the uh, measurements on, which is super helpful. Then of course you have your magnets. You can purchase these uh, separately if you break them and they're fairly easy to break if you're using two at a time so my suggestion is is never to use two at a time just use one they're super strong you really don't need more than one um, on your surface and then on the back there's a place to store more in fact I must have I must have lost one of them because I see that it's not back here but this is where you would store the two magnets that come with it 
All right, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to stamp that whole gang in the background. So I'm going to put my scrap paper on here. And here's my magnet. And I'm going to be using some soft suede uh, paper. And I have, it's, we're stamping two cards today, and trust me, they won't take long to make because, again, we're using the Stamparatus, and it's just so fast and quick. So both pieces of cardstock, again, this is our soft uh, suede cardstock, is three and three-fourths by five inches. Then we're going to use Early Espresso ink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this here, and I'm going to line it up so that it is one inch from this edge because my little uh, meerkats hang out over the side. So if you look at the actual picture, you can see I am kind of stamping off a couple of the guys. So that's why I move, that's one of the reasons I'm moving it away from the edge. So with the marking, it's, it's easy to do this over and over. So just bring your paper one inch from the edge. Then I went ahead and set up in advance my little meerkats. And another thing that I really recommend is if you're using your Stamparatus, you want to have handy something to put underneath here for inking. So Because if you ink on a flat surface, you're not as likely to get ink all over your plates. So the easiest and quickest and most obvious thing to use is the actual stamp set that you're working with. Oh, I'm so sorry, I've got, I've got these light bright light things on my screen but hopefully you can just look around that um so anyway i put my my uh stamp set underneath and that allows me to ink up the meerkats really easily and i'm going to be inking them up as i said in early espresso then the other uh thing that i like to have pretty handy are the um are some chamois and boy, you know, I love the chamois in a smaller size. So I take my chamois, I cut it in half, and then I store it in a half mount wood mount case or half size wood mount case. And so it works perfect. And you could actually get um, two chamois in here. So if you're on a long stamping session or you're going out of town or whatever, you could cut two chamois in half and it would fit just fine in one of these half size wood mount cases. But that's handy if you do get some ink on your fingers or on your plate. So anyway, back, back to stamping, I got all distracted. So now what I did is I just inked up the little meerkats in early espresso and I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to move the plate down one, two, three. So I move the, these, this is a hinge stamp now. So you can take these little plates out and stamp. And so I moved it down three spaces. I'm inking it up again. I'm going to move my magnet up here and then you just bring it down and you have your front panel space, uh, perfectly spaced. So this is, um, two and a half inches up and you can see two and a half inches here, because this is five inches, you can see the, it is exactly in the middle where we have this open area where we're gonna put our little uh, birthday meerkat. All right, so that's the first one. I'm gonna go ahead now and do the second one without all the explanations. We're just gonna focus on the stamping so you can see actually how quickly this goes. So we'll stamp the other side since it's all set up for the other side. And we'll move that magnet. We'll move the plate back to the top, ink it up one more time, bring it down, and there is our background. And I love how perfectly it stamps. It's just a wonderful tool, the Stamparatus. All right, so we're gonna take this plate and set it aside because I don't want things getting messy here. I am gonna just quickly take my chamois and just wipe that off. All right, now I can remove this plate and I'm going to remove my scrap paper because I don't need it for right now. And then you'll notice that I have a, 
a panel here and it's because we did this card at a shoebox swap so I needed to put a few instructions for my demonstrators what to do next so you'll notice it says vanilla panel in corner push to the left edge so let me grab the next set of panels we need which are the inside panel so we're gonna stamp the inside panel first along with the little meerkat that goes in the center. So I am stamping this and this. Hold on one second, I just realized I have to grab something. Sorry about that. All right, so these panels are the exact same size as our early or as our um, soft suede panels. So these are three and three fourths by five inches. And again, we're setting it in just as I said right here. And we're going to be putting this down for the inside panel. I think I'm going to set it like this. And then we are going to also stamp this little circle in here and so I have let me show you what I used so I used my die cutting machine and I used my layering circles and I took the straight edge circle and I just cut out two very vanilla circles here that we're going to be stamping so it's the second smallest circle so here's the smallest straight edge circle and I used the second smallest circle to make these cute little uh, circles for our meerkat to go in so you can just set that circle in just like this and Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our little meerkats Whoops, I have to put it up on this one and we're going to be going like this So you can see that's going to stamp just like that So I'm going to flip this so that I can ink it up easier and I am moving it over here and then I'm going to take not early espresso because I think that one would be too dark I'm going to take the soft suede and we're just going to ink up these two meerkats and then we're going to flip it over and there they are aren't they adorable now as long as we have this done we're going to go ahead and stamp the little hat and the little hat over here along with our inside panel. So one of the lucky things about being a demonstrator is I occasionally have the opportunity to get doubles. So I had placed a lot of product share orders and so I got a double of the Gangs All Mirror set. So what I did is I had a little extra hat that I could use, which works out great. So I'm gonna take this aside for a minute I am going to put this panel on and actually I'm going to flip this back again and then this is going to stamp like this so we're going to put the little hats on along with the sentiment for the inside panel and we're going to use re real red ink now one of my paper pumpkins from the past had a little uh, real red uh, Stampin' Spot. These are super handy for using with your Stamparatus. So I'm just going to open it up and I am going to ink up the sentiment and the little hats. And then I'm just going to close it up. And there we go. Isn't it super cute? Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I'm going to take this away and let that dry nice. And then we'll set this aside. And we're going to do the whole thing again. So I'm going to grab another panel of Very Vanilla. I'm going to grab another little cutout for my circle. But this time, we're just going to use how it's set up. So we can stamp the red next. We don't have to necessarily go in order. So I've got my little hats here. 
Got them all inked up, got the center, the sentiment inked up, and we're just gonna flip that down. And there we go, we have our hat, our hat and our sentiment. Then we're gonna take this plate out. We're gonna grab the little meerkats. Again, I have to move it like this. Make sure that's all lined up and it is. We're gonna take the soft suede again, ink them up and bring them over. And there they are, all done. Isn't that cute? All right, so now I will take this out. I'll take this little guy out. And set this aside. Do you see how very, very quickly this all goes? And everything looks so precise and professional. I really love the Stamparatus. And also, if you are one of those people and you tend to shake a little bit as you're uh, doing your stamping, the Stamparatus will help you be a lot more steady because you can put your stamps onto the plates and press down like this. And if, so if you're a little bit shaky, you don't have to be stamping really quickly. Um, you know, you can, you can kind of fight that a little bit with the Stamparatus plates where you're just pressing it down evenly. All right, so everybody was impressed with the plate, the plate placement and planning. Great, thank you, you guys. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is, we have one more thing to stamp. And I have some half inch strips here that we will stamp the sentiment on. You'll notice they're pretty wide. Sometimes when I'm cutting down my papers to make various size panels, I have little strips. Well, don't throw those away especially if you want to um, use them as a little sentiment. They, they work, half inch strips are great for sentiments. You can make them into banners. Um, and in this particular case, we're going to use it as a banner across the whole top front of our card. So the reason I made it extra wide is then we can center it once it is over the top of the panel where we're going to be putting it. So this says, from all of us, and I'm inking it up in real red. So there's the first one stamped. And we'll go ahead and stamp the second one here. And we'll put this right here. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble this card. And we are going to need some panels of real red. So this is four and one fourth by 11 inches and I've scored it at five and a half. So you can see it will open up like this. And the first thing we're gonna do is put our inside panels on because those are completely done. And then we can get them off my desk so they're not in my way. So I'm just going to take some snail. We'll put the snail along the top here. And we're gonna set them into our cards. So again, you just wanna make sure they're nice and, and evenly placed so your borders are about the same all the way around. And here's the second card. And then we'll just press that in, burnish the top, and it will stay there real good for you. Then we're gonna take our front panels and we're gonna take these little strips and I'm just going to add some snail again on the back. Get this out of the way. Here we go. And then what you want to do is, I don't know, if you want, you can, you can make it exact. But I'm just going to set this in so it's about a half inch down, I think, from the top. And try to get it so your, your sentiment is right in the middle. Flip it over, burnish it from the back so you don't smear the ink in case there's just a little bit of wetness yet. And again, you're gonna set this in so it's about a half inch from the top. And there it is. And then flip it over, burnish it from the back. All right, and I think what I was doing Hold on, I don't even see it. It's because I'm using it so much. I'm gonna go grab it, because I want you to see this in action. 
This weekend when I was making cards, I was using this really cute little mini trimmer that's available to new demonstrators during celebration. And it worked great for trimming up your little edges like this. So let me go ahead and just do this really quickly because it's so much faster even than using a scissors. You guys know how I love to use little scissors, you know, just the scissors to trim it up. Well, no more. I'm all hooked on this little mini trimmer. It just trims everything super, super easy. So if you are interested in getting the mini trimmer, be sure you contact me. Just message me and say, set me up to get the mini trimmer and we'll get you a cute little starter kit with Stampin' Up! and then you can get a discount on all of your orders. So it's a great, great little perk for new demonstrators in Stampin' Up! So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue. Except I forgot to uh, open it up here. Hold on. Ah! Hold on. I just, I just popped it out and it's all over. There we go. All right, so we're ready to use our glue. I should have did that before the video. I leave my glues open all the time. And so then when I get them started, I kind of have to clean that ed end off. And then sometimes I get a pop. All right, so we're just gluing this flap down onto our card. And we'll do the same thing to this one. Here it is. So cute you guys I hope you just love this card I'm gonna be so it's just so enjoyable for me to send these out to you all right now we're going to take those little uh, we're gonna pop this little guy up for the birthday so I'm gonna flip it over and I'm just gonna add some dimensionals here so I'm probably doing a little overkill but you know how three dimensionals are really good for a circle <laughs> this is a pretty small circle, but I'm still going to do three dimensionals. Plus, it gives me a little time when I'm taking the peelies off to look at your comments. So let me grab my little waste basket here. Here's my little waste basket. I've showed this. It's a little Brie container. And I'm so crazy about these um, in color, these little in color clips. I use them all the time. So I've, you can still get them on the clearance rack, too. So if you're interested in uh, finding the clearest rack, you know, just message me or let me know you're interested and I'll help you find it. Because sometimes finding things on the Stampin' Up! website is a little hard to do. So now you've got your little, um, your little guy circle here and you're just going to set it so that the ground is even with the ground where he's popping out. And then just set that in there so it's right in the middle. And there he is. And we'll do the same thing for this one. Well, hello, Joyce. Joyce says she loves the meerkats. I do, too. It's so much fun to play with. All right, so we're going to set this little guy in in about the same spot. Just make sure his ground is even with the ground here. Give him a little press. So cute. Now, what's the finishing touch for this card? Well, the finishing touch is to take some red rhinestones and just add a couple. So this is the package that I'll be doing as my giveaway on Thursday, and I'll just divide it in half, send it to our two winners, and then I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool, and I'm going to pull away with the end of this tool some of these little red rhinestones, and we'll just set this in. So there's one. And it's just these little tiny touches that just add so much to your card. Look at the difference. How cool is that? We'll do the same thing on this card. Just add a couple of little rhinestones like this, and it's so cute. All right, so here we are. We had a really fun time today. I want to thank all of you for joining me live. And then, of course, welcome to all of the people who are catching the replay and to everybody on YouTube who will be watching this in a couple of days. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have a great day. If you need any help placing orders, you can always message me or text me, and I will help you get set up so you can get the meerkat into your stamp room. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.